Hi there and welcome to Inside the Studio. I'm Evan Sanford. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We've got a great show for you. My special guest is composer and guitarist Kevin Eubanks. And as you well know, he spent 18 years as the music director for Jay Leno's Tonight Show. Kevin received an honorary doctorate degree from the university and was the commencement speaker for my class in April. It's a pleasure to welcome back Kevin Eubanks to the program. Thanks again for being here. Thanks for having me, Evan. Good to see you again. Well, how have you been since I've seen you last? Um, good. It's been a uh, really uh, amazing year. You've and, been busy. Yeah, I've been busy. And uh, I also like to balance being busy with, um, with other things, too, just to keep it all in perspective. Sometimes you go so long with being busy that you just co get caught up in the momentum of it. Sometimes I lose track of some other things that I like to stay in touch with. So this year has been a, a really good balance. And all the things that I have been doing are with people that I really enjoy working with. So it's been a wonderful thing. Well, a part of that busy year has been coming out to Redlands. Oh, yeah. And so uh, well, I don't think I asked you last time, but how did you make that connection to Redlands that first time? How did you end up coming out here? Wow, that's because of um, I went to... Uh, Okay, I'll give you the, the short version of a got time. funny long story. Uh, Richard Warman, a good buddy of mine, uh, was going to meet him at uh, Esri uh, conference, Jack Dangerman's conference, and uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't met Jack before, so I was looking forward to having dinner. I was going to say, okay, Richard, I'll meet you down there, and um, he says, no, 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 you got to come down and stay for the conference. This is, this is going to be great. It's going to be great. I said, okay, fine. I'm, I'm, Thanks for inviting me. I was hoping you would. <laughs> so, so Richard uh, was late because he got stuck in Detroit. Uh, I meet uh, Jack and uh, Martin O'Malley, and we're having dinner, and I'm learning about all those things, and I was asking Jack. like, well, you know. So, so I, met, I met Jack, and uh, Richard came really late. I stayed <laughs> for the conference, which was wonderful. I was so curious as to what it was, and it was just amazing you know uh, I was pretty overwhelmed by every, everything that I saw and the the focus that all the presenters had and and what they were doing I mean it was it's just good to see people really engaged into something that they really feel good about and and it's contributing to something positive it gives you uh, a different kind of feeling which I got at the conference and from that, Jack starts off and says, well, I just want everybody to just shake hands with the person next to him or behind him. And, and Char was behind me. So we shook hands. And uh, I, that was the first time I met Char and, um, and Jack's wife. And a lot, you know. So um, and Char said, would you be interested in coming to Redlands to do something with the university? And I was, sure. And so I did, and that's what started it all. And that was your first mistake, no. <laughs> because then she kept having you come out and come out and come out again. And it's been lovely, really. And it, it is a pleasure to come here, too. I drive down, and um, it's, again, it's really a different feeling to be in a community where you know somebody around cares. The energy is a little bit different. There's a little bit more compassion involved, even though there's a standard that everybody's trying to reach at the same time it's it's a um, it, it seems like there's something motivating it in the area of somebody caring about things happening so I like to be in areas like that I like to be with musicians that care about what they're doing so there's a um, a common focus involved so things even if you work very intensely you still get the feeling that you're being replenished as you're doing it because you know things like compassion and care can give you a lot of long burning energy you know when you come in face to face with um, challenges the fact that you um, actually have an emotional caring instinct about what you're doing gives you so much creativity and uh, energy to keep to keep moving on and some somewhere around here, I mean, I wish I could be more specific, but maybe that's enough, that um, I had the feeling that, you know, people around here care about what's happening here, and the students that I've met seem to have a very, um, generally have a great character about them and, and everything, so it's, I'm glad Char said, come back, come back, you know. 
<laughs> so I'm happy to come back. And then you were asked to be commencement speaker. Oh, and, yeah. and so how did that go? Well, um, I that, felt it, good. It, yeah. <laughs> I hope everybody else felt felt good too. And, and it's a, an honor to to be involved in, in on a day where everybody is. It's just a, an overwhelming day for the uh, parents as well as the students and the university. It's when all these things come together. I mean, it's a, a wonderful thing for um, uh, parents to see their children move on. And that's kind of like a, um, a point, a point of reference that, okay, you move on from here and you move on from here. And that's always a, a very emotional thing, but a happy thing at the same time. And you're talking to the, the graduating body and <laughs> <laughs> and you have the feeling that, you know, um, they're glad to be here, but they can't wait to just go hang out and, and, and celebrate, which they should. So um, it's always a, a wonderful time. Well, I know I couldn't have asked for a better commencement speaker, so thanks for agreeing oh, to do that, and thanks him. for being here. It's a pleasure, man. So um, we talked the other day on the phone about how you've been traveling around the country and yeah. performing recently. Yes. Talk to us about more about that. That's been a, um, it's been, like I said, it's been a real amazing year. And the uh, music that I've been fortunate enough to perform this year have been with great musicians, and I don't say that casually either. These musicians have played with some of the greatest uh, musicians and it's just great to be on the same wavelength as these musicians and when you're traveling it's not just what happens on the stage you know you're traveling with each other you're in the airport you eat together very often and you talk about things and you can kind of get a sense of where people are flowing and, and where they're going and uh, I got to play with a couple musicians that I hadn't normally had a chance to play with it's, it's really, um, I don't know, it's really interesting when you play with somebody and you feel that, like, one of the guys I said, did we go to high school together? I feel like we know each other, like we, we you know, we went to school together, or we walked home together or something, and I never had, you know, I mean, you know. Uh, so, but we had a great connection, as well as some of the musicians that I've been playing with that we've, you know, solidified our connections from you know so it just feels like you're um it's four of you going around but and somewhere in there it feels like there's one of you or one of something that everybody's contributing to and then you get to play music at the same time i mean which is you know the purpose for us being there i guess there could be other purposes involved too but um it's just been great it's what i've always wanted to do since i was a kid is play music with some really good people to make some really great music. So you talked about that sense of kinship that you you grow to have with these people that you're playing. Does that happen in the uh, rehearsal process or the performance itself or after when you're, you're all congratulating uh, yourselves after that great performance? I think it happens everywhere. It happens the initial meeting, the first rehearsal or the first time you break for lunch. Yeah. You know, it can it can happen anywhere in there. It's really just um, if you strip away all the things that you see, the things that you don't see that make the connection or the character of the people. So whenever I'm dealing with anybody at any level, I always have to remember that what you're really dealing with is the character of the person that you're speaking with or the character of the person you're working with. That's where a real vital connection can happen. You can love somebody's music and maybe not get along with them personally, which happens. In some, uh, in some areas, people, in, in a creative area, um, sometimes people want disparate type of characters to be forced to work out their differences. And when they can work it out, it creates a certain type of energy and in the arts, that can turn into something really beautiful, even though the people, after they get done, they go in two opposite directions. But the, um, what happens is you're left sometimes with a very interesting piece of art, whether it's music or painting or, or anything. The same thing can happen if two individuals meet, and one is on the right side and one is on the left side, and then they clash and clash and clash, and then they realize 
wow, you know, maybe we're not so far apart. And uh, so it's beautiful to see that happen too, although it's a little taxing um, during the process. But in the end, you come out and say, what a great recording that was. No, I don't really want to have dinner with you, but <laughs> let's play some more music together. <laughs> kind of being you know, exaggerating, but, um, but it does give you an interesting um, point of reference to really have to face the opposite side, but you're doing a performance, so you have to get it together. You, you have to you know, support that person because that's respecting your art form and the audience. So when you really find it necessary, you do find a way to see the other person's point of view in a positive way. Well, thank you very much, and we'll be right back with more Inside the Studio with a very special surprise from Kevin right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Inside the Studio. I'm Evan Sanford. We're here with composer and guitarist Kevin Eubanks, who was awarded an honorary doctorate degree in music from the University of Redlands. And I'm so excited because we're in for a real treat today because Kevin brought his guitar and is going to play for us in studio. Kevin, whenever you're ready.
Thank you so much. That That's was pleasure. really beautiful. Pleasure. Thank you. That's all the time we have for the show today. Thanks so much for joining us. Until next time, I'm Evan Sanford, and this is Inside the Studio. We'll see you soon. <laughs>